gentleman from South Carolina, Mr. Wilson, recognized for five minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman, for your leadership. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here. Mr. Secretary, your budget request sadly favors more regulations, more enforcement, and more litigation, uh, but not much to help workers and business comply. If enacted, your budget request would increase OSHA's office in charge of writing regulations by nearly 50 percent, and you propose incredibly to hire nearly 200 more employees for the disgraced office of the Solicitor of Labor. South Carolina has successfully overcome an out-of-control Solicitor of Labor. With the leadership of Governor Nikki Haley, Senators Tim Scott and Lindsey Graham, Attorney General Alan Wilson, uh, we were able to stop the department from what they were attempting to do, which was to close Boeing in Charleston even before they began production. So fortunately, with Nikki Haley's leadership, we now have 9,000 people who work for Boeing and suppliers across South Carolina, but that would have not been possible if we'd had an out-of-control solicitor of labor. Your OSHA budget for compliance assistance only increases by 11%, with only a 1% increase, obviously below inflation, for small business compliance assistance. As the American people struggle with inflation, war on service stations, and looming recession, how do you justify policies that penalize businesses without providing them the compliance assistance? Thank you, Congressman, for the, for the question. First and foremost, just um, the goal of the Department of Labor is not to punish businesses. The goal of the Department of Labor is to work collectively with businesses to enhance businesses for success. And that's why in this budget we're proposing $2.2 .2 billion investment for worker protections um, to, to, to work, let me say worker protection, excuse me, worker job enforcement and worker training and workforce development grants. The two areas that you talked about, well, I'm going to throw in a third one. We're asking for $9.6 million for OSHA, for standards, to make sure that we can make sure that we have worker protection for workers. We're asking for $3.4 million for MSHA. And we're asking for, in our, in our solicitor's office, a, a modest increase. We're not asking for these large increases that we're looking for. What we want to do is make sure that when we're doing regulations and when we're doing worker protections, that we're able to work across the board. I can honestly say, my entire career, I have never gone after businesses. I work collectively with businesses. Well, I, I'm, that's encouraging. But I, again, the experience of my home state, we, we will never get over the Department of Labor, the uh, Solicitor General coming in to close uh, an extraordinary uh, business, being Boeing Aircraft, uh, even before they began uh, production, except that they had a million square foot building, they had a thousand employees, and then your department, prior to you, came in and said, you can't build planes here. Uh, and, the, uh, and I'm just so proud of uh, Governor Haley, uh, Senator Scott, Senator Graham, Attorney General Alan Wilson, who's on a ballot today in a primary. Um, the, um, uh, South Carolina stood firm, and, uh, but we need to be working together rather than uh, uh, because, hey, uh, aircraft sales, uh, export are so important for the United States. Um, another issue is right to work. Uh, I'm really grateful to have introduced H.R. 1275, the National Right to Work Act, in the House. Over 100 co-sponsors. Uh, this uh, leaves up to the states uh, to determine uh, the uh, requirement of union membership. This bill erases automatic dues clauses in the federal statute without adding a single letter to federal law. Given that employment rose by 11 percent in right-to-work states as a group from 2010 to 20, five times as much as the forced unionism states, why is the Biden administration pushing to eliminate the right-to-work laws? Wouldn't that inevitably pose great harm, destroy jobs in a time when we're trying to have a recovery of our economy? Um, thank you, uh, Congressman, for that question. I, I do not support right to work states. I do not support right to work. I support people's right to be able to join a union freely and fairly if they choose. It doesn't mean it's an automatic. There's many states in this country that have, don't have right to work laws that, that workers have decided not to organize. The Biden administration believes in people's collective right if they want to organize. Uh, they don't force them to organize. You don't have to organize. And that's been the policy of President Biden since he's and been Mr. in Congress. Secretary, I respectfully disagree. What y'all are proposing is force unionization. And uh, my home state of South Carolina, because of right to work, uh, we are now the leading producer and exporter of cars of any state in the union. We're the leading manufacturer and exporter of tires of any state in the union due to French, Japanese, German, 
uh, uh, Singaporean investments. And so um, right to work works, and I, look, I hope that you will look into it. I yield back. Thank you. Thank you.